Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. Most folks out there, not all, but a, a good amount of you, couldn't tell me a pansy from a petunia. And that's okay, you know, if you don't know what you don't know. Well, this week we're going to talk about bolstering that confidence, bolstering a little bit of knowledge, and beautifying some of your landscape just through the simple use of what's in the nursery every spring, summer, and fall. So, without further ado, let's get this thing going. Okay, although there is many impatient people out there, let's start this off with a very short story. Very short story about my horticultural career at the whopping age of 19. I started off at the nursery industry, and I did not know much between a petunia and a pansy. But I had a good work ethic, and that's how I got started. In the end, I was placed in a rotational training program that initially started me off in bedding and ground cover section of the nursery. I was under the supervision and the tutelage of a lady named Lita, a very hardworking lady. In any case, I was introduced in very much of a uh, baptism by fire, because Lita was not the greatest trainer, into the bedding. And I was in charge of taking the flats from the truck, putting the flats on the table, making them as presentable as possible, and then learning about what I was stocking. And that right there started me off in my horticultural journey up until today that really bolstered my confidence using annuals. And what I did was I got a lot of the throwaways before they went in the dumpster. And I was able to nip and tuck them a little bit, give them a little bit of food, and then put them into containers back at my little humble apartment. And I learned. I learned how to grow. I learned what to do with them. And I'll tell you what, I went from a, a landscape zero to a landscape hero in about six months. I really felt confident, so much so that I figured I'd found a career. So much so that I even enrolled in college and started taking ornamental horticulture classes all because of annuals, all because of petunias and marigolds and, and pansies and violas and dahlias and zinnias. My apartment patio turned into a, a gray fence with a exposed aggregate concrete to just a, a flourishing, flourishing bunch of summer annuals there that actually attracted attention from the neighbors and the how-tos and the questions that came about. So, for you, you can go down some of the same path if you choose. You can bolster your confidence. You can go from not knowing too much about nothing to seriously knowing how to use stuff either into the ground or into containers. For me, it was all about containers. And it just helped. It really did. So, without further ado into that little introduction, let's talk a lot more about our lovely plant world called annuals. Now, unless you're working as a newbie in the nursery industry, like I happened to be back in 1978, I don't suggest that you uh, go to the local nursery and say, hey, can I start rifling through your dumpster? I, and I don't suggest that. But what I do suggest for the noobs out there is to take a few minutes and go to the nursery specifically. Get up on a Saturday morning, go get your favorite breakfast drink if you want, and go to the nursery during a time of year that is very advantageous to large amounts of inventory and selection. Most of the time, that's not going to be January. January is inventory season. That's when they're at the very lowest amount of stuff they could possibly have. Go there in your uh, zenith of your spring and early summer. The more north you are, like where Maestro and I, we're almost on the Canadian border right now. It is August and the season is 80% gone already. But if you're down in the southern climes, heck, you guys probably start around March or so, maybe even early February. And you guys go and go and go, and in some places, Florida, Southern California, Arizona's and deep you know, Gulf states and Texas. And if you're in the southern hemisphere watching, you know what it's like when it's uh, December. You know, maybe even November and October down there when it's your big time of year. That's when you want to go and you want to expose and immerse yourself into all the things called annuals. All the varieties, the shade lovers, the sun lovers, etc. And that's where you'll get a very good feel. 
Another thing is cell pack annuals very seldom have a lot of bloom. Some do. I'm not going to say they don't. You may have a blossom or so that tells you what the color of the flower actually looks like. If you look at the four inch stock, the four inch stock in flats generally come in flats of like 16. Oftentimes those will have bud and bloom on them and that's where you really learn about what they look like and their growth habits and what it could what could it do for you. Now for some of you maybe you have a very very boring landscape. Maybe you're an apartment dweller in a patio or a balcony just you know pretty stark and you want to you want to beautify it just a little bit or a lot. This is where annuals and your horticultural prowess can come into a beautiful symbiotic relationship so that you can really thrive and your plants will too. A couple of things that you want to take with you in your head as you head out to that nursery is two or three or four questions that you might want to have answered from one of the nursery professionals, well, whatever that might be. The other thing is, is where you're wanting to beautify, are you gonna put it in the ground or are you gonna put it in a container? Either or, that will drive you to parts of the nursery as far as potting soils and containers, etc. Now, once you get to the nursery, allow yourself 30 minutes or 45 minutes just to look around and figure out where things are and what things you're really kind of attracted to. And then lastly, know the location that you're trying to beautify. If it's in the ground out in the front yard, is that sun, shade, a little bit of both? And then what kind of plants are going to work there? Not only is this annual journey that you're going on right now going to teach you how to grow and, and care for these things, but you can transfer this knowledge you're getting over into perennials, over into shrubbery, over into trees, and over into bulbs, hanging baskets, house plants, and the horticultural world door just opens up for you. All because of a cell pack somewhere that you started off and put in a, a container or a bowl or a hanging basket and you were successful at it. Here's a little word of advice though. Don't get discouraged if you do something wrong and you happen to lose a cell pack of pansies in a container. You forgot to water them one day because you're not an expert yet. Don't worry about it. Take them out, go back to the nursery, get another cell pack. Maybe you're out two or three bucks, not a big deal, and then do it again. Don't walk away from it and just go, see, it just doesn't work for me. Try, try. Your failure is one step closer to success, as the old saying goes. The other thing annuals are going to do for you is they are going to allow you to get off the X, so to speak. It's going to allow you to execute and do something about your lack of horticultural prowess rather than just sit there and keep complaining about the same old area that looks like crap. Get off that X and start educating yourself. The other thing is, is with the purchase of those annuals and potting mixes and all the things that you're putting together for yourself, Exploit the knowledge base of some of the local crew there, some of the nursery professionals. You know, ask them, hey, this is the area I'm putting them in. Are these selections going to work? And what should I know about them? And what should I expect as far as signs of success or signs of failure when it comes to my planting? I really don't know a whole lot. And allow them to tell you. They really want to tell you. They really want to expound on the knowledge base that they have, they have acquired and they want to give it to you. And as a result, you're purchasing some of the materials right from their end. You're keeping them employed by buying these things. Do not walk off the grounds and go someplace else like a discount store or a box store and get it there because you saved a whopping five or six bucks. Come on. There's a lot of good people at the box stores. I'm not discounting those hardworking folks that are there. But oftentimes, out in the nursery area, they don't have a true educated nursery professional. They have somebody that has generally been assigned to that area and maybe has shown a little prowess. But when it comes to a lot of horticultural knowledge, they don't know what they don't know either. So stick to the mom and pop places and allow them to teach you. 
And once you know, yeah, you know, go get the stuff wherever you want. You know, in this day and age, in the crazy, crazy world that we live in, much different than when I was, you know, <laughs> in grade school, much different world that we're living in. Can you name a lot of things out there where the more you put into them, the more you get out of them? You know, I don't know. I, I seem to, th maybe I'm a little pessimistic, but when it comes to people, you could put a lot of effort into people and they'll still disappoint. You could put a lot of effort into a career, but maybe you don't play the political game and disappointment might be there too. In the plant world, if you learn how to do things, starting off with something as simple as petunias, chances are the more you put into them, the more flower and flourish and brilliance you're going to get out of them. It's a great 10x return on your small, simple investment. They really are. So it's my firm belief that if you uh, use these annuals, use these uh, really quick, rewarding type of plant material, it is a great launching pad for your confidence. And it will bolster you in a matter of sometimes even days and weeks rather than months and months. Take, for instance, annuals like uh, Lobelia, like Alyssum, okay? These guys tend to be a very, very quick rewarder when it comes to success. You can plant them on a Friday, and the next Friday, practically, you'll start seeing growth. They respond that quickly. Now, some other annuals, say like uh, annual vinca. Annual vinca is very, very ground temperature uh, based, and you can plant those things, say, in May, and you're not going to see a whole lot of response until July. And then, then they really, they really get a foothold and they will reward you for the next two and a half, three months, all the way, depending on where you live, all the way into the fall. They do very, very well in a mid to late summer, early fall. So know that going in. And you can kind of learn how to stage your annual show every year. You really know the ones that are going to come on fast in the late spring and early summer. Then you know the ones that are just going to just stop the truck out front. So as you start to acquire some of this knowledge, understand that you can stage up your whole growing season. Your whole growing season with fast responders, mid responders, and then late responders in the annual world out there. And then if you want to, the following year, you can expand out into the landscape, ground planting without any problem. You can start mixing in perennials as backdrops. And hey, sky's the limit from that point on. And it all starts with maybe a 12-inch pot, a small thing of potting soil, a little bit of fertilizer, and a couple of cell packs of pansies, petunias, dahlias. I mean, I used to like taking... Uh, zinnias and dahlias and putting them in the center of a larger pot and then putting spilling petunias or million dollar bells or other things like that cascading over the sides. And it turns out they really work well together. So let's talk quickly about some of the sun selections that are pretty common out there and then also some of the shade selections. You will see, you will see that up in the northern latitudes, up towards where we're at right now, a lot of the shade selections, a lot of the shade selections, you can put those things right out in full sun. Not going to be a problem. We have traveled all over the northern parts of Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine and New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. And you've got, you've got begonias and impatiens out in full sun like ground covers up here. It's very, very nice to see. So here's a short selection of sun ones that you can yeah, take a note of. And then when you go to the nursery, you go, ah, okay, zinnias. That's what coach was talking about. Here we go. Ready? Petunias, lobelia, pansies, violas, calendula, or the winter marigold, regular marigolds, zinnias, dahlias, calabracoa, the million dollar bells, 
Cosmos, only one warning about Cosmos. If you let them go to seed, you're gonna have Cosmos for several years. Annual Vinca, remember, they take a little while to get going. They may sit there for a whole month before they actually do something. Don't get discouraged. They will reward you later on in the warmer months. Snapdragons, common sunflower, which are becoming very popular. And in some cases, look for the sun patients, the sun impatience. Those things are quite the rage. Just do not overwater them. They do not like wet, wet feet. Now let's look at some of the shade selections. Those there, we have the usual bedding impatience, usual bedding begonias. There's also the angel wing and the rex begonias that you can look into. Although not always considered an annual, the availability suggests annual involvement, and that would be fuchsias, both upright and trailing, and then also uh, caladium bulbs. They do pop back most of the time, but the availability is kind of on a seasonal basis and an annual basis. So consider those as well. Caladiums, oh my gosh, you get some of the white and the green veined ones and you have them in a sunny location and then front those with bedding impatience. Mm. That looks really good. So there's a couple of selections. There are several more, but we're gonna keep this relatively short. Annuals are really a great gateway plant to introduce yourself to the horticultural world and to beautify what you call home fairly inexpensively, although it seems to go up every year, but compared to going out and buying gallon can and five gallon shrubs and stuff, annuals and four inch and cell pack type of things are really, really inexpensive. And just to beat some of the smart that are probably gonna comment, no, I am not a subscriber to the annual cannabis plant. I'm really not, but hey, it's an annual, right? Guys, that's what I have for you this week. I do appreciate it. If you stuck around and got some value out of this, I'd really appreciate a like, I really would. And then I'll catch you next Friday. If you want a slightly longer version of this one, check out the podcast. It's always available. And I'll catch you guys next Friday. The website is there, youryardcoach.com. Thank you to those who picked up a couple of checklists and a book. I really do appreciate you very much. And if you have any questions, like some questions came in last night, I'd be happy to answer them personally. As always, to your guys' landscape success, see you next week. Goodbye for now.